What record was it that you set, Harry, in reaching the summit? First double above knee amputee to summit the Mount Everest. Must give you a massive sense of pride, though. Yes, but it's not pride of just me. It's pride of people with disability, it's people of Nepal, it's pride of the UK and I'm, our armed forces and veterans. <laughs> it is, I think, a decent achievement and hopefully it will encourage other people to take a challenge and climb whatever mountain that they have. My name is Hari Buda Magar and I was serving with the Royal Gorkha Rifles in Afghanistan when I stood on and detonated an IED. The injuries I suffered were life-changing, but I have refused to let my disabilities define who I am. Since losing both my legs, I have broken a number of world records and recently became the first double above knee amputee to climb Mount Everest. For me, nothing is impossible. I was born in Kaushed in the um, western part of Nepal. It was tough, uh, not just for me, but m many people in the in the area. Uh, Nepal is lots of hill and rivers, and so it was about 45 minutes each way. I went to barefoot to school, and I, we didn't have any pen and paper, so we learned to write on wooden plank with a chalk stone. My dad always wanted to join the army. My granddad didn't let him join the Gurkhas. So we are three brothers and I'm the oldest one. And he always used to tell us that one of you must join army. And yeah, I just fulfilled my dad's uh, dream. I served initially, um, I'm, I'm the infantryman, rifleman. Then I trained as a sniper, as a team medic. I did covert surveillance. When I joined, uh, and I didn't know about we have to train on so many different things. We have to read lots of doctrines. I did not know that. So what I knew was when war happens, then we have to go and fight. You know, you know that, that was the thing that I was clear on that. So we knew that we have to go to Afghanistan. So my job was to multiple twice him, and I was the most senior Gorkha in the squad. We had uh, two jobs. One was to go and family ride with the area. Uh, second one was they said that there was a, like a, a very old well. So we need to go and survey that so later they can go and repair that well so local people can have a water. It was a food patrol and we were just going, we passed a couple of compounds and we were 20 in the squad. Normally my job is to stay the second man behind but on that day I was 10 and nine people passed same part and when I went it just suddenly went bang my life changed in simply split seconds and the first thing I noticed was it was ringing my right ear I had a radio on the left then I I can I see the all the dust around everywhere and the guys were shouting man down and just looked at my right leg straight away there wasn't any my left was there, but dangling on bone and skins. I also injured my right arm, uh, and uh, the guys put a tourniquet on and put a field dressing to stop the blood. Everybody did, I think, the amazing job and passed me up. Uh, and they said, heli inbound in 10 minutes. Uh, maybe I'm going to survive. Then later, I just felt I let down the guys because you are there to support each other. So you, you watch my back, I watch your back, right? And also, if you got injured, somebody has to go back and replace you. So um, I really, really felt that, you know, I let down my squad, my regiment, my company. So that was hard. Even coming back here, um, about two months, I was just thinking of them uh, because it, 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 it's tough place. Tell me about those first few days after your injury, when you understood the extent of the injuries that you had. What was going through your head then? I grew up in Nepal, especially in those remote villages. And, you know, disabled people were not treated very well. Uh, many Nepal Nepalese, we think that once you're you know, disabled, disabled and you are the burden of the earth and also, you know, scene of previous life. So I thought that way. Maybe I have done something wrong, so I get punished. Maybe I have to leave the rest of my life in a wheelchair and I would need a carer for the rest of my life. I blamed myself for many, many occasions and 
one point I started drinking quite a lot. And at the time, uh, when I didn't drink, I, you know, my hands started getting shaky. And at one point I thought, yeah, if I'm going this way, I'm going to die soon. Um, that's fine. If I die, that's fine. You know, it's, it's in my story. But if I die, my family will suffer because of that because of me. You know, they, my children wouldn't have a dad, my wife wouldn't have a husband. I just wanted to live for them and yeah. Later some ways I pulled myself up. I gained the confidence back through sports and adventure. So the first thing I did was uh, skydiving because at that moment I was kind of half suicidal mode. I thought half of my body is gone. So if another half goes, this is not my story. But when I landed safely, I said, mm, can do the things even if you don't have legs. From little child in Nepal, we are very proud that Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world. And I read the story of Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norge, who submitted first time. And I was all really fascinated by that. Uh, later, I tested myself going to Nepal, how my body would feel on altitude but also whether physically it would be possible to do that. So I went in 2016 and after that, yeah, I think this is possible, so let's try it. And I announced that, okay, I'm gonna do it. And once you said, you, you're gonna do it, then you have to do it, so. I climbed Ben Nevis, Mont Blanc, Kilimanjaro, Chulufarist, Merapik. So I had decent level of experience. Also, I think the way I grew up in childhood and my military career made me quite resilient and make me to never give up. So I knew that this is possible if we could adapt, but the weather was so bad. The wind um, and the snow was really bad, really cold. I felt all my energies drained, but I was thinking at that time that if I need to create the history, I have to work much more harder than normal people. And I just didn't complain and I couldn't give up. Once we crossed Hillary's step, uh, we knew that we're going to submit. And I started getting a bit emotional, uh, tears coming down my eyes, and later I found that they're frozen on my cheek. It's just amazing that when we challenge ourselves, what can we actually achieve? Two years of my time was lost because I didn't know what I could be able to do. Now I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that I've, I, I found my purpose. And the rest of my life, I'll be making awareness of disability. Are you proud of the journey that you've been on, Harry? Yes, I'm proud of every step I have taken so far in the life. And I've got some of the values and ethos that I carry. And one thing is I shouldn't lose them until I die. And when people look at you, what would you like them to see? After losing my legs, um, some of my friends, they start treating me differently. But I'm the same guy. The same mind, same heart, only you see is I don't have legs. I would like people to see me as a, as a human being and try to do something uh, for our next generations. Do you consider yourself a hero, Harry? No. I'm a normal guy who just wants to do something to make a world a slightly a better place. What role have military charities played in your recovery, Harry? I think that the best part of my recovery, I think, is those military charities particularly adapting my house where I can take my wheelchair. Also, they gave me all the opportunity uh, that um, all the adaptive sports that I was fortunate to do. I would like to say all of the players of the Veterans Lottery, please play as much as you can and support uh, veterans and our armed forces. If you like to help veterans like me, please play the Veterans Lottery. Thank you.